truth seekers. We're uh, getting close to the spring equinox. It's just a gorgeous day here in the northern hemisphere and I hear the, the birds singing their spring song and I just uh, wanted to make a quick video. I started recording sundial data yesterday uh, and um, so I want to talk about my plan and what some other methods are floating around there, uh, out there. And uh, so I, my data that I collected yesterday is showing that the um, the arc has not flipped yet. So in theory, if the quote unquote straight line method is accurate for confirming the spring equinox, and that seems to suggest the spring equinox has not happened yet, the arc is still pointing the same direction it was pointing for the winter solstice. So um, we we shall see. I shall continue to collect data from here, and we'll see if we can zero in and uh, see that line straighten out and then flip. Uh, this I, I saw that last fall. I saw it get to the straight line, but I I didn't get a third day of data following the event to make sure the line flipped. So I'm really excited this spring. I hope to actually have three days of sunlight to actually be able to see the flip occur like I want to occur I want to confirm that the line doesn't like kind of hang out and get straighter like right around the time of the equinox I want to make sure it's clearly arced one way the day following the spring equinox and then the day of the spring equinox is straight and then the day following it has flipped and uh, we're still very much in pioneering territory uh, the, even the straight line method, I'm getting that from Juan Carlos. Um, I don't know where he got it. I really like it. Um, if it works, that's just truly amazing. Uh, the geometry that the creator put in place to, to make that straight line happen. But um, I think it is still in the process of we're, we're still in pioneering territory and we need, to, we need to establish that matter. And the best way I can, there are two ways to establish that matter that I can see. One is that um, you can, uh, three different people at three different latitudes all see that straight line pattern on the same day. So like one in the northern hemisphere, one in the southern hemisphere, and one near the equator. And if they all see the straight line on the same day, I think that'll that's one good way to confirm. Another way to confirm would be to actually get the uh, pin down the dates for the winter and summer solstice events, and then theoretically the day directly between those solstice events should be the spring or fall equinox. So um, those are the two ways I would like to eventually see one of those two confirm the straight line pattern. I wanted to add a, a few tips real quick about how to collect the sundial data if you're trying to do the straight line method. I noticed uh, last fall in 2018 something that worked really well for me. If you're looking at this picture, this is, you can imagine, three days of data. It's exaggerated, but this is approximately what you're going to see uh, in theory. Uh, three days of data straddling the uh, equinox events, so you're going to see the arc one way the day before the spring equinox, and then you're going to see the straight line on the equinox event, and then you're going to see the line flip the day following, in theory. Uh, so one thing that worked for me is that I found actually works really well for small sundials and is probably a very convenient way to do this um, is if you look at this picture those three lines converge near the middle and get closest together right in the middle of the picture so that's going to be the hardest place to kind of tell the difference uh, from your data points from day to day but out to the sides of the picture those data points were collected in the early morning and late evening evening. So if you are able to collect your data in the early morning and the late evening, you're going to get uh, more of an arc. So what that's going to do is that's going to, when, you, uh, when you're going to test your data to see if you got the straight line, you just, just simply draw a line between your the first point you collected in the morning and the last point you connected in the evening and if any of your other points are 
you know, off of that line, then you know the arc hasn't happened yet. But like I said, the arc is really pronounced. The earlier in the morning you're able to collect your mark, the better. Uh, and the earlier in the morning and the later in the evening. And I just want to put caution, a little caution out there. If you try the straight line method and you only collect like a few points of data or maybe a lot of points of data, but you're not doing any of them in the early morning and the late evening, then your arc is not going to be very pronounced because you didn't get it in the late in the early morning or the late evening and so the line could appear to be straight because you didn't get points in the early morning or the late evening when the curve you know when there was more of a curve like if you only get it near the middle of the day it might actually look straight on all three of those days so i i in a nutshell my recommendation is if you try the straight line method do try to get points uh in the early morning and uh the late evening if you can as early as possible and as late as possible and really you to do this you really only need three points one in the early morning one in the evening and then uh, one somewhere around lunchtime uh, and you should be able to tell based off of those three points like when you connect the the two end points in the morning and evening you should be able to tell if that third point is on the line or if it's not on the line. Let me talk briefly about some other uh, methods that I've been hearing people are going to try this year. Uh, the other method that I'm pretty familiar with and I hear a lot of people talking about is this 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 semicircle with four leg sundial uh, the one Jerry Morris used um, I uh, you know I, I just uh, would like to say I have some concerns about that method and I just you know it, it might it might be good way to confirm uh, I'd like to see all the methods that people are trying someday confer all confirm the same dates but if they don't I would like to suggest a possible reason for why they might not and the the concern with that uh, semicircle sundial thing is <clears throat> um, um, they sighted in on the North Star and the North Star, from everything I can see, the North Star actually moves. And so if people are sighting that their sundial in at different times, then they're going to get uh, slightly different results. And with a sundial that small, little tiny, uh, some, uh, little tiny shifts like that is enough to kind of mess with the data. So, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, the North Star moves. So, uh, I believe this is so, and I mean, I think people are under the impression that it doesn't move, but I'm going to try and show, um, I guess I'm only going to have time to show a picture of one of these, uh, these star wheels, but I have seen this in Stellarium, and if I knew how to record video of my screen, I'd show you what I'm looking at in Stellarium, but in Stellarium, if you uh, set Stellarium so that the North Star is up in the corner of your screen, theoretically, uh, when you run a revolution, like you just speed up the clock and have the stars start spinning in the sky, theoretically, if the North Star wasn't moving, then you would see the North Star up in the corner of your screen the entire time the stars were rotating. But what I have discovered is that the North Star disappears. Uh, like, it doesn't stay in the corner of your screen. It actually moves off of your screen because it is moving a little bit. And if you look at some of these star wheels or star trails or whatever they call them, you got, you got to be careful because these things, people Photoshop these things. But if they did it right and this is real, I think this picture is kind of showing what I was talking about in Stellarium. Like, if you look, there's not a star, there's not a point right in the middle. You don't see the North Star right in the middle. You see the North Star is theoretically, I think it's one of these other stars, and you can see it's actually moving. Uh, it's not It's not a perfect dot. It's actually moving. So that, that's my concern with that sundial. Like I said, uh, I hope that we're still in pioneering territory, but ultimately, as more and more people do this, I hope someday we can we can confirm some of these methods and then see all of the methods confirming the same date. I'd also like to add real quick, the thing with this um, uh, semi-circle uh, spherical sundial thing is I think it 
it has the potential to confirm, uh, you know, the 360, well, no, it has the potential to to confirm the sun has returned to the point of beginning, yeah, and, and to potentially confirm what the actual duration of the year is, if, if you're doing it correctly, and there are other, other things you gotta be careful about, like, if you made it out of wood, the wood warping, and, uh, just uh, other things you gotta watch out for, but if uh, it does seem to me that this method is a fine method for confirming the uh, duration of the year, and you know, people, Jerry made the claim it was 364 days, I think people kind of taking a second look at his videos have realized that the lines were starting to drift slightly off from where they should have been. I mean, and if you start to collect sundial data of your own, you will get a feel for how how accurate these these measurements have to be, like how tiny the movements are from day to day. So if, if it's not like all the way on the line, it's gonna need another day to get all the way on the line. Like it's, I think it moves even less than a string's width a day, as Jerry said in his video. But anyway, so my, my other thing I'd like to mention is I think if it, if it, if it is truly done correctly and precisely, and you're paying close attention to the subtle differences, and you are you are actually getting you're seeing your mark return to the point of beginning. Uh, I think yes, it's possible to confirm the duration of the year, whether or not that's 364 or 365. I think is something that in light of what I just said, uh, I, I think we should still try and prove that out, because it does kind of seem like uh, modern science might be onto something, but I'm open-minded. But the other thing I want to say, apart from the duration, is the start. Like, yes, like I said, I, I think that sundial might be able to tell you the duration of the year, if you're using it accurately. But that does not necessarily tell you the start of the year. Uh, like, which day is the starting day? Like, I, I'd, I'd like to hear s someone's reasoning on, on why or how the, it actually determines... Like, it only tells you the duration of a cycle, I think. I don't know how it tells you the, the, the starting day. So I don't know when Jerry Moore started recording his data, how did he start? How did he pick the day he started to make his first mark on? Uh, like, was he, did he just pick the spring equinox that year that he, um, uh, that he started doing it in? So that's just, uh, that's just more food for thought. Uh, if, if someone wants to talk about that, uh, that's fine. Like I said, I mean, I, I think it might be a fine way of uh, confirming the times. Ultimately, I'd, I'd like to see all of the methods uh, kind of confirming the same day at some point. And so, and I'm going to have uh, links in the description below my video uh, for uh, different people uh, that I'm aware of. I know I know Leland and hopefully Nick out in Jerusalem, I think, are going to try and make some observations. Uh, they are they are using that uh, it is kind of a big version of that wheel sundial that I just talked about so uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just not sure uh, I mean I, I hope they do collect it I hope they also get a chance to, I hope people get a chance to try several different methods um, if they could but uh, anyway um, so I'll have a I'll try and point to as many different people as I can so you can go and compare and confirm uh, what different people are doing. I've also made some Facebook, face, Facebook groups where I'm collecting all this data. Uh, there's another gentleman, his YouTube profile I think is uh, called Squirrel something, and uh, he seems very passionate about trying to confirm the creator's times, and he said he's going to be taking an entire week off and like trying a whole bunch of sundial methods to confirm this, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what what he's going to do this uh, this year. 
um, and he's already put out one video kind of showing his his sundial contraption and his is an interesting one it, it's almost I think it's almost like a uh, a large sextant uh, where he's kind of measuring a shadow what at what angle the shadow disappears along a straight line uh, <clears throat> So I, I've asked him to put out another video kind of explaining his plan for the spring equinox. So if he does that, I'll post it in the description below this video. Uh, but for his for that method in particular, where he's rotating a piece of his sundial to see the shadow disappear and then he's reading the angle, um, I think it was great the way he demonstrated it in his video. Like, he couldn't see the angle as he was measuring. He was just focused on taking a good measurement, and he wasn't he wasn't being biased because he couldn't see what the angle was. So it wasn't like he was he could try and make the angle be what he thought it needed to be. Uh, he was, you know, it was uh, an objective measurement. Uh, that's a very good way of doing it, I think. Um, but I, w I am curious to know what his plan is for the spring equinox. Uh, how is that angle determined? Like, is it just, uh, is it kind of the angle, if you look at the solstice angle, the winter solstice angle, and the summer solstice angle, is it like the angle between those or something? How does he confirm that? So I'd like to hear more about that so we have time to think about that and kind of, you know, analyze it with him. Um, let's see. Another method I've heard is the people are planning to take pictures of the sun on the horizon, maybe either the rising or the setting sun, and um, <clears throat> the, uh, the I have a similar question about that. I mean, that's a good way to do it too, I suppose, like in the, if you're looking at the the eastern, the the sunrise. Then, on the day of the summer solstice, you'll see the sun rise in an extreme uh, north position, I think. And then, on the day of the winter solstice, you'll see the sun rise on an extreme south position. And then, right in the middle of those, you will see the sun rise theoretically on the day of the equinox. And so, I'm just curious, uh, you know, how they're going to measure that middle point. Uh, uh, what is that with respect to where did that data come from uh, but these are all good like I said pioneering territory I hope everyone gets out there and tries some of this uh, and I hope I do hope that we uh, at some point we end up kind of getting a feel for this and confirming the day with all of these different methods um, so that being said uh, the it looks like Google is saying the or modern science is saying the spring equinox is going to be on the 20th this year uh so if that is correct um it seems the first day of the year would simply be the day following the spring equinox when i read enoch that is that is what i get when i read enoch uh and i know i'm not alone in my i know a lot of people have been saying it, it's something else and the times are detached but I, if any of you are familiar with Jerry Morris, uh, I'd just like to include his witness with this. I'll include an audio clip, but when he read Enoch, he read it to say the first day of the first month was simply the day following the spring equinox, and the first day of the seventh month was simply the day following the fall equinox. Like, it's, it's just this simple, you know, it's like Enoch said, there are four portions of the year, uh, and the uh, seasonal days separate the four portions of the year. It's the four seasons, and so the first day of the year is the first day of spring, and the first day of the seventh month is the first day of fall. Like, it, the, the seasons split the year into f quarters, and they also split it into halves. So you got, you know, it, there are two ways to think about that. Obviously, the first day of the first month is easy. The first day of the seventh month is a little trickier, but it it's really, it's really not that tricky. I mean, you just got to realize that these seasonal days, regardless of the cycle of the sun, 364, 365.25, 366, 365, it doesn't matter. Like, you're still going to get uh, four portions of the year. You're still going to get four seasons. You're still going to get the spring equinoxes and the fall equinox. And according to Enoch, the, you know, the you're going off of solar months. A lot of people think these are solar months, and I think they are. Uh, I think that's what Enoch talks about when he says the 
when he says the year has four portions and you know he talks about the 30 days those were 30 day solar months <clears throat> because you know it's the book of the courses of the luminaries that's how Enoch is described it's not the it's not the book of of the times or the independent number cycles the book of Enoch has the luminary sections has everything to do simply with the movements of the luminaries it was simply observational data recorded uh, so there I don't see any numbers that are that do not have a luminary witness to back them up. They weren't just floating around. Uh, so anyway, um, the so the the seasons split the year into four portions. Whoa, dog. <laughs> Whoa, one of these days. Uh, anyway, um, the uh, oh, what was I saying? Okay, the, so the four seasons of the year split the year into the four portions of the year. Uh, and it also splits it into halves, and that's where the first day of the seventh month comes into play. Like, you don't, I don't think we need to get so fixated on what a month is, because uh, there's, there's another way to think about that. And especially if you're thinking the year, if solar months has any significance to you, like, that's all it is. Like, it's the first day of the seventh month is always going to be the day following the, the fall equinox, regardless of the duration of the year. Um, and that's, that's, that's just because there are 12 solar months in a year. That's what Enoch described. And uh, so you, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the, 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 so the, uh, the, there are six months in the spring and the summer. And so then when the spring and the summer is over, that's six months, and so the the next month, non, month number seven, begins with the fall, and the first day of fall is the first day of the seventh month. And you, like I was going to say, you don't have to be, you don't have to be concerned about the. It's not a concern at all to think about the seasons. You don't have to try and sync the calendar with the seasons, like the the seasons and the luminaries. Uh, what people call nature or the agricultural calendar, I think it is the times. Like, that's what Genesis says, I think. Genesis 1.14 says, I've given you the luminaries, let them be for uh, signs, for days, for seasons, and for years. And I think it's, it's really quite obvious that we have seasons and years because of the sun. And uh, so all that said, uh, I also want to confirm, I think there are other witnesses, too. Um... The, the witness to confirm the the uh, spring equinox on the first day of the year and there's this verse that I think people uh, are making different doctrines out of uh, but it, it's the it's the verse that talks about um, it, it, it's in chapter 74 I believe and it's the verse that says, you know, the sun and the stars bring the year in to 364 days with perfect justice. Some of the translations say the sun and the moon bring the year into perfect justice. Some some translations say just the moon. And so, like I said, people are building different doctrines out of this, and they're assuming it has something to do with the phase. And I would just like to say, I do think there is another witness to confirm the start of the year. It's not just a solar witness, but I think the moon creates a witness. But it's not necessarily the phase. I think it's the portal alignment and if you read the preceding chapter the peculiar cycle of the moon that is the context of what precedes uh, that section of Enoch where he says you know either the moon or the sun or the stars bring the year into 364 days with perfect justice like the, the that previous chapter actually talks about how the moon is racing through the portals it moves through the portals uh, seven to eight times or well, three to four times faster than the sun does and Enoch describes the moon as the lining up in the same portal as the sun on the day of the equinox and you've heard other people talk about this I think Asherit uh, the woman who posted on Jerry Morris's channel uh, she she mentioned this peculiar pattern of the moon and how it lines up with the portal of the sun and I've checked this out in Stellarium and I'll have to do a if maybe I'll if I'm able to I'll show some pictures or if not I'll do a separate video but I've checked this out in Stellarium and it does appear keep in mind Stellarium is program software but it does appear that in Stellarium uh, the moon zeroes out with the sun in the in the fourth portal in the third and fourth portal on the day of the equinox like 
right on the money, pretty much, uh, in Stellarium. And uh, that's actually quite an incredible confirmation because, like I said, the moon is racing through the portals three to four times faster than the sun. It's a different cycle, I think, because if you read that chapter 73 in Enoch, it says another law for her, the moon. So he, he got finished talking about the law that had to do with like the lights and the phases, and he said another law for her, and this law of the movement. People pay so much attention to the phases, but I think there's potentially a big, something very big to the movement of the moon through the portals. And Enoch describes the moon as lining up with the sun in the portals on the day of the equinox. And for that to occur at the different speeds they're going is quite an incredible confirmation. And uh, like I said, I've seen this in Stellarium pretty much right on the money. And um, Asherit, uh, the woman on Jerry Morris's channel, I believe she has claimed to have seen this visually for the past two years. And it's possible maybe the moon is actually going to, the phase might somehow line up too, but I, I'm I, I tend to think it won't. I just because the 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 phases of the moon year cycle phase I thought was ten days off from the sun, so I just can't imagine how that can happen more than one year in a row. But maybe I'm missing something. But definitely, if you check the context of Enoch, the preceding chapter, it's saying the moon's another law for her, and it talks about the revolution, not the not the light, but the revolution, the movement of the moon through the portals, and how that that matches with the sun. So I'll be I'll be trying to look out for that too for this spring equinox and if you I encourage you guys to to do the same. In addition, I just like to say um uh, I'd like to well get back to to that verse that people are building different doctrines off of that says the sun and the moon bring in the year with perfect justice or the stars bring in the year with perfect justice. I've checked the translations, and I've got like eight or nine different translations of Enoch, and they are literally split on this verse. Like roughly half of them say sun and stars, half of them say moon and stars, two I think, two of them say moon, only moon. And uh, oh, so that reminds me, like I don't, I don't think those two translations are right. I definitely think it has to do with the sun because it's more than just this verse that talks about the year and es establishing the cycle of the year. Like you see, and I think Jerry Moore, well, yeah, they're in chapter 72 uh, at the end where it finishes talking about the sun. It's It uses the word year, so it says the sun completes the year there. And then in this verse that we're talking about, uh, it talks about the year being brought in with perfect justice. And then at the end of Enoch, at the luminary sections of Enoch, it, there's another uh, verse that again talks about the sun the 30-day uh, months, solar months, uh, going through the portals, uh, the four portions of the year, the four seasons, so it's definitely the sun has a role to play in it. And I just want to say with regards to that translation uh, of that verse, I think people are creating different doctrines. They're kind of just picking one translation and running with it, but I think we need to be careful about that, and I think it's obvious the translators, something was going on, because half of them said this and half of them said this, and recently one of my viewers sent me uh, even another version of Enoch that I hadn't seen yet, and this version of Enoch, I think, might have the answer, and it, instead of saying sun and stars, or uh, moon and stars, or just moon, when it got to that section, it said and they bring in the year with perfect justice. And um, I think that's the answer, really. Uh, that matches the context. That matches the other two witnesses I said in chapter 72 and, and the one at the end of Enoch. Like, there's nothing, uh, there's no contradictions there, and we're not ignoring any other witnesses, I don't think. Like, I think it is just that they definitely the sun and the moon that was the previous context that we just read about in the first part of Enoch 74 and in Enoch 73 it was just talking about how the sun the moon matches up with the sun on in the third and fourth portals <clears throat> and so I think um, 
I think that that translation is correct when it says they, and it's definitely the sun and the moon, so those are two witnesses right there, and I think surely there must even be a third witness. I think, I think it's very likely that the stars also confirm the start of the year. Like, I know Enoch says, uh, <clears throat> I think Enoch says there, you know, there were leaders of the seasonal days, there were leaders of the months, there were leaders of every single day, I think he said, in the stars. And so I haven't had time to look into that one, but I'm going to, and I think it's very likely we're going to be able to find a witness in the stars as well. So what, what that means is I think we're going to see confirmation from all of the luminaries which day is supposed to be the spring equinox. And like I said, I think simply the first day of the year is going to be the day following the spring equinox according to what I read in Enoch and uh, now I'm going to share that clip uh, where Jerry Morris I think came to the same conclusion um, and uh, I think like I said I think it's just unfortunate there are people out there trying to say time is independent of the witness of the luminaries but I I don't think that's so uh, I don't get that from Enoch Jerry didn't get that from Enoch I don't see that in Genesis 114 uh, so, anyway, uh, sh that's uh, that's it for now. I'll, I'll post more videos and uh, about uh, how these uh, observations go. Shalom, and uh, may Yah bless as you continue to seek out this truth in love with a pure heart. And uh, another thing I'd like to say is that equal day and equal night, and this specific in uh, in Enoch chapter seventy-two that the day after equal day and equal night is the first of Abib. The day after the equal day and equal night of the 31st day of the sixth month is the first day of the seventh month. So read Enoch really close before you get a little messed up.